and before I knew it, I was out cold. I am not a healthy person and I'm afraid of doctors. Not THE doctor but real life human doctors. I just feel uncomfortable in that whole medical setting. I don't like people invading my personal space which is why to be in a place where doctors and nurses have all the right to invade my personal space, it really gets to me. By the way, to clarify, I'm not talking about things like inappropriate touching by nasty humans, misusing their profession for nasty stuff. Luckily, I've never been in those kinds of situations. It's the normal stuff that's enough to make me feel uncomfortable. Okay, I'm gonna need you to open your mouth wide and say ah. <laughs> now I'm just going to check your reflexes, it won't hurt a bit. <laughs> this is a rectal suppository. You just need to lie down and relax while you stick this up your for it to dissolve and, and spread on you. Yeah, that's traumatizing on its own. Worst part was when my elder sister once had a backache and she had to take her shirt off during one of her checkups. She was in her bra but that made me swear to never ever go to the doctor no matter how serious things got. So I guess you could say that I'm just shy to see a doctor. Which is why growing up, I hardly visited the doctor. Whenever I'd fall sick, I'll keep things a secret and try to get well on my own. It worked for a few years until 2017 when I was in some deep shit and had no choice but to face my fear. So for this part we're gonna need to take a look at the past. Let me introduce you to a short segment called stupid things I did in the past. When I was 13, I became very conscious of my weight. I was 30 kilograms and my BMI calculation stated that I was underweight. But my circle of friends were filled with people who were lighter than me, so I decided to starve myself in order to lose weight and avoid passing 40 kilograms. There's a reason this segment is called stupid things I did in the past. I'm not gonna talk about the dark, emotional, mental stuff. Let's fast forward to when I was 19 years old. I had been starving myself on and off for 6 years, fearing that 40 kilograms mark and I lost a lot of weight. But being a college student for one year, meeting different types of people, positive people, getting a taste of the world helped me mature a little. So emotionally and mentally, I was at peace with myself about my weight, but I had gotten used to starving myself. It became a habit. It wasn't easy to put a stop to skipping meals when I've been doing it for so many years. And to be honest, I was very oblivious about the state I was in. I didn't think that things with me were that serious. So this continued until August 2016 when my fingernails and toenails started to crack. They looked scary. They didn't even look like a normal human nail. I also started to lose hair. I panicked and immediately consulted the family doctor. Dr. Google. What, you thought I was going to see a real doctor? Yeah, right. According to Dr. Google, there were so many possibilities to these cracked nails and hair loss, but at least I wasn't dying. Well, not yet. This time, I tried to eat normally, I tried to avoid skipping meals, but instead, things became really bad on the third week of December 2016. I had eaten noodles for dinner, and I remember waking up at 3 in the morning feeling extremely bloated, having horrible burps, and just all around feeling sick. I felt something coming up my throat, but I wasn't sure what it was. You see, I resorted to starving myself instead of puking things out because in general, I hate the idea of puking. So because I had not vomited for a few years, I didn't really know what it felt like. For a while, I was like, am I going to puke or is this just a really big burp? I puked. Ever since then, I was not able to hold down anything I ate. I was done with college and started working, but this vomiting just continued. Sometimes if I was lucky enough, I won't puke it out. Other times I'd have explosive diarrhea. Rest in peace, Mr. Toilet. I started to lose even more weight. This was the stage where even my family knew that things had gotten serious. So I finally decided to see a doctor. Yeah, I was afraid of doctors, but at that stage, I was just scared of dying. But the doctor couldn't really say much, so instead he wrote me a letter to see a gastroenterologist. I went with my parents for the first appointment, which was a huge mistake because they may not have noticed the whole skipping meals, but the one thing that they did notice was that I stopped eating rice, which was a huge crime in my family. My family family is obsessed with rice. Rice is the source of life, according to them. Breakfast, rice. Lunch, rice. Dinner, rice. Got a crush on someone? Cook them rice. What, you injured your arm? Put some rice on it. Wanna bring your brother back to life to pick up where dad left off, saving people hunting things family business? Use some rice. 
So I may have exaggerated for the last few things, but they literally thought that the main reason I was suffering and puking things out was because I stopped eating rice specifically. The specialist did kinda agree with them, so to rule a few things out, he needed me to do a few tests. The first thing I had to do was get an abdominal x-ray. I went inside the room with my mom and sister, but the nurse ended up chasing them out. She was quite pissed, so I had to be on my own. Very nice, good job, not that I'm scared of anything. She left me to change, but here's the thing. I was wearing my binder and that binder was the one that's not very easy to get in and out of. But she was one of those scary nurses and I didn't want her to get angry. But then I couldn't take my binder off, so I just went into the battlefield ready to lose my head. But nothing happened. Happened. So that was good. Next up, I had to do an ultrasound of the abdomen and pelvis. There was another lady inside, so I had to wait for a while. While waiting, my nurse Ika gave me a cup of water to drink. Once the room was available, I walked in and found two nurses inside. They asked me to lie down on a bed, and then they rolled my t-shirt upwards, exposing my tummy. Then they slightly pulled my jeans down. Who am I kidding? They went all the way. Dignity? What's that? All I could think of at this time was, thank god I shaved. And then the doctor came in, so he dimmed the lights and started rubbing gel all over the parts that were exposed. Was I dying? Oh yes I was, on the inside. It was quiet and awkward, the nurses were on the other side, this doctor wasn't saying anything. Occasionally he would say something like, breathe in and out. And I was like, how long? <gasps> How long is this going to take? Can someone end this misery? Once it was over, the nurses switched on the lights and they just started wiping off the gel. I don't want to sound like a spoiled brat, but I was extremely uncomfortable. Just imagine, there I am lying down with my tummy and the half of my lower part exposed while these nurses wiped the gel off and we were all quiet. Well, what kind of conversation could we have had in the first place? So, the gel. Sticky stuff. Huh. Yeah, no shit. So once they were done, Ika then checked my blood pressure and she directed me to the area for the next test, which was the blood test. When I arrived, I saw a queue and that's when I noticed small containers being handed out and they kinda looked familiar, like the ones you'd pee in for a urine test. No wonder Ika gave me that cup of water. There was no point in me getting shy or embarrassed over it because there were others who had to do the same thing. My turn came, I took the container confidently and went to the toilet. Once I was inside, a wave of realization came over me. How was I supposed to pee in this tiny little container without making a mess? Because here's the thing, I was born without man berries. I didn't have the ability to aim, if you get what I mean. So my last resort was to meditate. I managed to do it. So I walked outside and handed it over to the nurse in charge. And that's when I saw the other containers that were filled by my comrades. They didn't even fill the container the way I did. Some were lesser than half, while mine was the only container that was 100% full. I was the outcast. I couldn't grab it from the nurse now. It was too late. And I'm still not over the fact that I gave them more pee than I was supposed to. Moving on, it was time for the blood test. And that's it, we were done for the day. The results came out the next day. The blood test did show that I had a mild blood infection. Now the next step was to do an upper endoscopy. An upper endoscopy is when a flexible tube with a light and camera attached to it is passed through the mouth so that the doctor can get a view of the esophagus, stomach and upper part of the small intestine. So my endoscopy was scheduled to be on a Saturday. In the meantime, I did a lot of research and scared the shit out of me with things that I read. I was afraid of the procedure but was also afraid of the results. God knows what kind of state my stomach was in. Saturday came and it was time. I was told not to eat anything 8 hours before the procedure. When I arrived, I had to sign a lot of papers. You know, the ones that said, if we accidentally kill you, 
you saw it coming. Then I went to my ward to put on the hospital gown and was whisked into the endoscopy room. Then the doctor and a few nurses came in. The doctor sprayed something in my mouth. I knew what it was because I did my research the night before. It was a throat numbing spray and it tasted horrible. It was bad but the doctor said that I had to swallow it so I did and the bad taste was gone. Then I was asked to lie down on my left side while the nurse placed a mouthpiece and asked me to bite on it. As he's doing this, I start to feel a cold rush of air and before I knew it, I was out cold. Yep, everything was pitch black. End of video, there was no endoscopy experience because I passed out. Well, I didn't really pass out, I was just sedated. The next thing I know is that I'm back in my ward. I was still a little dizzy but I felt like something was stuck in my throat so my mom rushed over with the nurse next to her who gave me a tray where I ended up spitting blood out and then I went back to sleep. I woke up again, this time feeling a lot more like myself. So what the gastroenterologist found was that I had a lot of potential ulcer signs in my stomach. The entrance of my stomach was scarred from all the vomiting though. So the conclusion he came to was that I had gastroparesis, which was slow emptying of the stomach. So what happened was when I started losing weight from starving, my gastrointestinal system slowed down to preserve that energy. Plus, I wasn't getting enough nutrients, so when I started eating again, it didn't function the way it used to. He gave me some medication. At the same time, I had to eat small amounts of food throughout the day. All in all, I had to pay attention to my diet. But all of this because of something stupid that I did in the past. Who would have thought that it would cause me problems after 8 years? So the lesson is that whatever you're doing now, like skipping meals, staying up late, straining your eyes, it may not have an immediate effect on you now, but it will torture you in the future. Just know when it's time to put a stop to things. So do you have any hospital stories? Because the stuff that I mentioned earlier like x-rays, blood tests, urine tests, they're quite normal basic stuff that I'm sure some of you have done before. So tell me your embarrassing hospital stories so that I can make myself feel better, especially for the urine test. Can someone comfort me? Like I couldn't have been the only one who actually gave them a full container of pee. Maybe there's a medical student here who's like, it's okay Josh, the more pee the better. By the way, I was actually given the recording of my endoscopy, I saw the inside of my stomach and I also saw the biopsy being done. Remember the blood that I spat out when I was awake? Yeah, that was because of the biopsy. I literally saw the inside of my stomach bleeding. Unfortunately, I lost the CD. I did go back to the hospital and asked if they had any record of it. I was willing to pay because wouldn't it be nice to let y'all see the inside of my stomach? But I couldn't get a hold of it, so I'll leave it to your imagination.